Hello, five minute rounds today coming at ya. This is an FNA of uh, a swelling on the ventral neck of a dog, a 10 year old dog. So really very um, common situation you're gonna potentially see in practice that I want you to be familiar with the cytology on because it is very interesting, very cool, and very clinically pertinent. So 10 year old dog, ventral neck swelling slash mass-ish kind of feeling thing under its neck. So on this lower 10x objective, we can start to see that there are lots of cells here. And the cells are, hold on, let me get my arrow, sorry. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, there's my arrow. So we've got some clumping of the cells here into nice cohesive groups, which of course we're gonna look at closer, but there's nice grouping here. We've got a good number of cells that are all scattered about in this blood that look like they're bare nuclei. We're gonna look at those closer too, but these are all just sort of nuclei that are free in the background, and then we're coming up across these groups of cells that look more like epithelial cells. And when we look at them closer, we can see that they are stuck together in cohesive groups we get in focus where you can see the junctions between the cells pretty well. That will be even more apparent when we're at far closer up objective. Some of these look a little bit rounded. So you might be saying, well, okay, I hear you. There's kind of a clump there, but the individual cells look pretty round, which let's go ahead and just get up to 60X here. And I would buy that, right? So I see there that these cells do look a little bit round when you're looking at their individual shape. But they're really, they're looking like they really want to stick together. I mean, they really do. So even when they're out here individualized off of their main clusters, they still are sticky. So these are epithelial, and the type of epithelial cells that these are are actually what we call the neuroendocrine appearance. So neuroendocrine cells sometimes just look like a bare nuclei on a sea of cytoplasm where you don't, you can't make out their cell borders very well at all, but sometimes they actually look very round like this. So if you take these individual cell borders, they just have that nice round shape. Um, another scenario you might see cells that look like this are in like pancreatic neoplasms, um, adrenal medullary tumors. Those are all areas that have neuroendocrine cells or that can develop neuroendocrine tumors. Another place you might be familiar with this are um, our anal sac adenocarcinomas that have that neuroendocrine-like appearance as well. But so another giveaway for this being neuroendocrine is that these cells are forming these what we call pseudo acinar structures where the, the cells are forming almost like a little ring around the rosy shape, which let me find a better one of that really quick. This one's okay. So here we can kind of, it's a little subtle here, but you can make out that these cells are sort of forming a little ring shape and almost like a little block there. So these are neuroendocrine appearance cells. In the ventral neck, if you have a neuroendocrine neoplasm, oh, one other thing about neuroendocrine neoplasms are they tend to have a lot of bare nuclei. They're very fragile cells, so you'll see all these bare nuclei that I mentioned scattered about in the background. Here's a nice really a really nice pseudo acinar structure that I just mentioned, that r ring of nuclei, but they're all individual cells. They're, it's not like one big cell. So this is because it's a glandular um, organ, but it, it's that particular neuroendocrine organ. So then, okay, so we say this is an epithelial neoplasm in, in a dog that's consistent with a thyroid neoplasm. In cats, if you see this, this actually might be um, an added, or a, uh, thyroid hyperplasia, so it's not always a neoplastic process, but let's just focus on it being a dog for a second. So in a dog, this is consistent with a thyroid neoplasm because it's in that right location where the thyroid is. And even though these cells don't exhibit really any criteria of malignancy, this nuclei size, the shape of the cell, um, the, the cell size, all of that is pretty uniform. We don't see like really big nucleoli or anything. The majority of thyroid neoplasms in dogs are carcinoma, and that's something we just need to remember about particularly neuroendocrine tumors is that even when they're carcinoma, they may not look like it on cytology. That's as opposed to cats where the vast majority of those are either adenomas or thyroid hyperplasia. Um, so you have to keep those statistics in mind. You can get a biopsy to confirm that this is actually carcinoma and not a rare case of an, a thyroid adenoma in a dog, but they bleed like crazy. So just be really careful if you do that.